الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُم مُّصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ إن شاء الله I won't take any more time and let the Sheikh start to talk. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين One day the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم went to the graveyard in the city of Medina known as Al Baqi and he went there to pray the Janaza prayer of one of the men from the Ansar, one of the men from Medina who had passed away. And with him were some companions. And they went into the graveyard before the grave had even been dug. The grave hadn't even been dug yet. So they went into the graveyard and the Messenger of Allah he sat down and the companions sat around him. And the companions and the one who was narrating this hadith, Al-Bara ibn Azib, he said that we sat down as if afraid to disturb birds standing on our heads. Meaning they sat so still and they were so attentive to listen to what the Messenger of Allah was going to say that they were very, very still. That if they had birds on their heads, the birds would be comfortable, they wouldn't fly away. Which shows us how attentive they were when it came to listening to the Prophet being attentive, showing good etiquette and good manners listening to what the Prophet ﷺ would say. And this shows us when a student is learning from his teacher, you need to make sure that you have the same type of etiquette, the same type of manners. So the Prophet ﷺ, he sat down and he looked towards the sky and then he looked towards the heavens. He looked towards the sky and then he looked towards the earth. He looked towards the sky and then looked towards the earth. Three times he did this. And then he looked to the companions and he said to them, Ista'idh billahi min al-qabr. Seek refuge in Allah min azab al-qabr. From the punishment of the grave. And he said this three times. And then he himself, he said, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min azab al-qabr. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the punishments of the grave. And he said this three times. So he advised others and then he did what he advised other people to do. And this shows us whenever we give advice to somebody, we should always take that advice on board and take it upon ourselves to implement what we're advising other people to do for in the first place before we advise others. And once he said this, he started to talk about the journey that the soul takes once it's taken from the angel of death. And it's one single hadith, a very long hadith, and we're going to be going through just this one hadith. We're going to go through just this one hadith which talks about when the soul is taken and what happens to the soul when it's in the grave. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that when the believing slave is about to leave this world and enter into the next life, which is known as Barzakh, this period of time, not in this world and not in the hereafter, is known as the Barzakh. Now what does Barzakh actually mean? What does the word Barzakh mean? The word barzakh actually means a barrier. The word itself, if you look at the Arabic language, it means barrier. Who can tell me why it's called a barrier? Why is it called barrier, this barzakh, this state in the grave, this moment when you're in the grave, why is it known as barzakh? Who can tell me? What do you think? Why would it be called barzakh? Why would it be called a barrier? Anybody? Just take a guess, it's okay. Don't worry if you get it wrong. Excellent, Zakhlaq. So it's holding you from the next world. Okay? So for example, if a person gets accepted into paradise, he'll want to go to paradise, as we'll see in this hadith. But he can't go to paradise yet because you know he has to wait until the day of judgment. And for the disbeliever, does he want to go to hellfire? Does he want to go to hellfire? No, he doesn't. So he'll want to come back to this world. But again, he won't be able to. It's a barrier for him to come back to this world. So the Prophet ﷺ is explaining and talking about this time when the believing slave, the believer, the mu'min, he's about to go uh, into this realm of the barzakh, this different realm, after the soul is taken away. So he says that when this happens, angels descend from the heavens and their faces 
are white like the sun and they sit an eye distance away from the Muslim, from the believer, from the mu'min and then the angel of death comes and these two angels that come before the angel of death they have shrouds from the clothes of Jannah and they have perfume perfume from the perfumes of paradise and they're sitting at an eye, an eye distance away from this believer who is about to die and this believer doesn't know he's going to die you know, he has no idea and so they sit an eye distance away and then the angel of death comes and when the angel of death comes it sits by the head of this person by the head of this believer and then it says O oh good and peaceful soul depart to Allah's forgiveness and to Allah's pleasure and then the Prophet ﷺ said on hearing this the soul leaves the body as easily as water drops from the spout of a water skin you know when you take out water from a glass, it doesn't get stuck in the glass, it pours out all at once, pours with ease, it doesn't take, it's not hard for the water to come out, is it? It comes out really easily. So likewise, the believing slave, when the angel of death tells it to come out of the body, the soul comes out easily, like water from a glass. And when this soul comes out of, the, of this body, of the body of the believer, all the angels between the heavens and the earth pronounce peace and blessings on this soul because he was a good soul you know he was a believer he was a righteous slave and all of the gates of the heavens are opened up for him for this soul and the guardians of every single gate of the heavens they ask Allah that this soul comes in their direction because it's a blessed soul he was a believer so they all want a part of this soul they all want this soul to come close to them to pass by them you know, it's like a, an honor for them. You know, when you meet, sometimes when you, people meet someone they like, someone famous, a celebrity, they want to be attached to them. You know, they want to be next to them, they want to be with them, they want to shake their hands, they want to take something from them. They want to be associated with a person. You know, so likewise, the angels, they want to be associated with this good believer, with this slave of Allah. So they want to be close to him. They want this soul to come through the heavens and through the gates next to them and close to them and then the angel of death takes this soul and the angel of death doesn't have this soul as the Prophet ﷺ said except for the blinking of an eye as soon as it takes this soul the two angels that were waiting an eye distance away they will take this soul straight away from the angel of death and they will wrap it in the garments of paradise and they will perfume it with the perfumes of paradise and then once they take this soul, the Prophet ﷺ said, he recited the ayah from the Qur'an, he said, Describing these angels who have been sent by Allah, That our messengers, the angels, take the soul, And they never neglect their duty, meaning they're efficient. They carry out the duties of Allah, because angels don't disobey Allah. You know, unlike human beings and unlike the jinn, the angels don't disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they have this soul and they cover it with the perfumes of paradise. And this smell is a smell which doesn't exist on the face of this earth because it's from paradise. And so it's, you know, one of the most beautiful smells that you could ever smell. And it's something which you can't even imagine. The Prophet said that the smells of paradise are smells which you've never ever smelled before. It's something totally out of this world. It's something you've never smelled before. And then this soul will be raised up and be going to the heavens and every time it will pass by angels the angels will say who is this blessed soul they'll say who is this beautiful and good soul because they'll smell it and they'll see it in those garments of paradise and the garments of paradise are beautiful aren't they so they'll see this soul in beautiful clothes and a beautiful with a beautiful smell and they'll say who is this person and the, the angels will say this is so and so son of so and so and they'll use the best names that this soul was called by in this world they'll use the best name that this soul was called by or, or was named by in this world they'll use the best of names you know sometimes a person's person's got a name but then there are other names that other people call him by which he prefers you know the prophet what was he called what was his nickname you can tell me even before he was a messenger al amin he was al amin you know, he was known by this name. It was a good name. So good people are, are remembered with good names. And so the best name that this soul was remembered by in this world, the angels are going to mention him by this name. 
this is so and so, son of so and so, and they'll use the best names. And then when they reach the lowest heaven, they'll ask for permission to enter into the lowest heaven and the gates will be opened up for them. And then the angels of that heaven, they'll take this soul and they'll escort it. They'll have, he'll have his own escort, taking him from that heaven up to the next heaven. And then the angels from the next heaven will take the soul and escort it and take it up into the next heaven. And this will happen until he reaches the seventh heaven. And then he'll reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. This is the believing slave, this is the honor of the believing slave. So the soul will reach up all the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself will say, Write my servants' records in Iliyun. Write my servants' records in, in Iliyun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions what Iliyun is in the Quran. He says, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا Iliyun." And what do you think Iliyun is? Kitabun marqum, And a recorded or an inscribed register. So everything is recorded in this book with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the angels will record everything in Iliyun. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to them, take him back to the earth just like I have promised them. Meaning take the soul back to the earth just like I promised them. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promise us? Who can tell me? Allah is saying take this soul back to the earth just like I promised them. Take it back. Because it's not with the body now. The body doesn't go up into the heavens. Where is the body? In the grave. The body is in the grave. So it's just the soul that's going up. So what, what has Allah promised? He's saying, take the soul back to the earth because I've promised them something. What has He promised this, the soul? Every single soul. Minha khalaqnahum That from it I have created the human being. Allah created the human from clay, from mud, from the earth. And from it or in it they're going to go back. And I'm going to raise them up from the earth on the day of resurrection. This is what I promised. So the soul has to go back into the grave just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted. Just like He you know, had promised. So then the angels take this soul all the way back into the earth, back into the soul, or back into the body. And then, when the soul is back in the body, now the body is in the grave. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, when the soul is in the body, and the body is in the grave, it can hear the footsteps of the people walking away after he's been buried. So every single soul when it's buried, okay, even though you're down underground, you can still hear, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it possible for you to hear the footsteps of the people who came to, you know, bury you. You'll be able to hear the footsteps of those people walking away. Why would He, why would he make people listen? Why would He make the souls be able to listen to the footsteps? Why would He make the soul listen to the footsteps? What's the point of that? You can tell me. Huh? What's the benefit of this? Yeah. So that he knows he's trying to like care for him. Is that okay? But they're walking away. They're walking away. So what does that mean? Yeah. So everything that they had is, is gone. Jazakallah That everything that they had is gone. Nothing. Nothing's going to help them now. And that's what the Prophet Sallallahu said. He said, "Yet be al He said, three things follow the soul, follow the body to." the grave. Two of those things go back and only one of those things stay. One of those things stay. The two things which go back are his family. His family don't benefit him anymore. If he was married then his wife's going to probably get married again. You know his children are going to carry on with their lives. His family and his wealth. His wealth not going to benefit him anymore. You know the wealth after he dies is going to be taken and it's going to be divided amongst his inheritors, those who inherit from him. They're going to take the money, you know, his sons, his wife, his, you know, siblings, brothers and sisters, they're going to take all his money. He's not going to benefit. Only one thing, the third thing is going to stay with him in the grave. And that's his actions, what he used to do when he was alive. So now he's in his grave and the people are walking away, he can hear now. Meaning that's it now. There's no going back. He can't go back now. They can't help him, he can't help them. There's nothing he can do. He's on his own now. 
And then when this happens, two angels approach him. Now he's in his grave. And this is Barzakh now. This is this moment of time. It's a different realm. It's a different, you know, place and a different time. The rules of this world don't apply to this time when you're in the grave. It's not the hereafter and it's not this world. It's in between. It's the Barzakh. And someone might say, you know, this Barzakh, if I had like a, a camera which could see in the grave of a person who has just been buried, I won't see anything happening. I won't see him talking. I won't see him do anything. So I don't, how, how can you believe in Barzakh? How can you believe in Barzakh when I see that nothing's happened to the grave? It's still the same. No one's talking to him. But you know when, for example, someone sleeps, when you see someone sleeping, he looks fine. It doesn't seem there's anything wrong with him. But that person who's sleeping could be having the worst nightmare ever. He could be having the scariest nightmare. He could be really, really afraid. But can you see that when you, when you see him sleeping? Do you notice it? You don't notice it, do you? You don't notice him. You don't notice how he's feeling. Or even you, for example, sometimes you're sleeping and you, you, you know, you're having the worst dream that you could be imagining. Like scary dream, the scariest dream. But people can't tell. They can't tell that you're having that dream. You could be scared, you could be afraid, you know, you could be angry, you could be really emotional, you might be crying in your dream. But people, other people, they don't realize. And Barzakh is a different state, as I mentioned, it's a totally different realm. And so, when the person's in his grave and is in this state, two angels approach him. And they make, they shake this, this, this believing slave. They'll shake him and then they'll make him sit up and they'll ask him four questions. They'll ask him, Man Rabbuk? They'll say, Who is your Lord? And the believing slave, he'll say, My Lord is Allah. And then he'll ask him another question. He'll say, What? Or they'll say, What is your religion? Ma dinuk? And he'll say, My religion is Islam. And then they'll ask him a third question. What's the third question? Who can tell me what the third question is? You only need to know these questions. Messenger. Okay, very good. Who was that man who was sent to you? Excellent. Who was that man who was sent to you? And so they'll say, he is Allah's messenger. And so then they'll ask him a fourth question. So the believer, he'll get four questions. The believer will get four questions. The disbeliever will get three questions. The believer will get four, four, four questions. He'll be asked an extra question. The extra question will be, okay, you believed in Allah, you, you were a Muslim, you knew about Islam, you knew who this man was, you knew all these three things. What did you do? What did you do? What were your actions in this world? So that shows us it's not enough just to know about these things. It's not enough to know about Allah, know about Islam, know about Muhammad Wasallam. <coughs> you have to do good deeds. If you don't do good deeds, it's not going to benefit you at all. You know, that's why the scholars, they would say, uh, that we would be, we are afraid that on the day of judgment we're going to be asked ماذا علمت بما, ماذا عملت بما علمت? What did you do with what you knew? Forget about what you know Forget about what you know and what you learn and what you study If you're going to madrasa, if you're learning you know, from YouTube for example or you're, you know, you're, you're learning from a teacher who's teaching you Quran or Hadith If you're not acting upon what you know then it's not going to benefit you at all. That's why the scholars, they would say, al-ilmu shajara wal amalu thamara. They'd say that the tree itself is knowledge. Knowledge is the tree, and the fruits, okay, are the actions. Because the actions are what's going to get you into paradise. For example, what does Allah say in the last ayah of Surah Al-Asr? Wal Asr, what's the last ayah? What's the last ayah? Can you tell me? Surah Al-Asr, Wal Asr Inna al-insan la fi khusr Illa al-lazina Amanu wa amilu salihat MashaAllah, excellent, very good Illa al-lazina amanu That everyone is at a loss Illa al-lazina Amanu, except those who believe wa amilu salihat and they do righteous deeds. 
So it's not just enough knowing, you have to be able to do good deeds as well. And that's what we're going to be asked in the, uh, in the grave. <coughs> what did you do? And so the believing slave, and inshallah we ask Allah that we're all from the believing slaves in the grave inshallah. The believing slave, what will he say? What will he say? He'll say, I read Allah's book, believed in it, and I obeyed it. And then they'll shake him again. And they'll ask him these same questions again. And then he'll answer these same questions correctly again for a second time. And then with regards to the believer, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, Yuthabbitu Allahu alladheena amanu bil qawli thabit. In the Quran Allah says that Allah keeps the believers firm with firm words fil hayati dunya wa fil akhirah. In the life of this world and in the life of the hereafter. So what he's going to say in the grave are firm words. Allah will make him firm because he was firm in this world. You know, he never used to disobey his parents, never used to take drugs or drink or watch things he shouldn't be watching or saying things he shouldn't be saying. So he's obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's strong in his faith. And when he's strong in his faith, when he's in the grave, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make him be able to answer those questions correctly. Even though he might be afraid, but he's going to be firm in what he says because he was firm in this world, but it's different to the disbeliever. And then, when he says these, when he answers these questions and makes these statements and he answers these questions correctly, the Prophet ﷺ, he said that a caller will call out from the heavens. And this caller will say, my servant has spoken the truth, so provide him with furnishings from Jannah. So he will be given furnishings from Jannah. Clothe him from Jannah. Give him clothing from Jannah. Open for him a door to Jannah. So he'll receive clothing from Jannah. A, be a beautiful smell, a perfume from Jannah. And his grave will be spread. His grave will be made really vast and really wide for him. Nice and wide for him, like a huge king-sized bed. Maybe even wider than that. The Prophet said, as far as the eye can see. That's how wide his grave is going to be. It's going to be like a huge, enormous bed. It's going to be relaxing in the grave. Because he was a believer. He'll be really, really comfortable. And then a, a man will come with a handsome, beautiful face. And handsome and nice clothes. And a beautiful smell. And he'll say to him, I'm here to give you glad tidings that will please you. Tidings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's acceptance and gardens of everlasting bliss. This is the day that you've been promised. This is what this beautiful man will say. He'll just come to this person in the grave. And the person in the grave, he'll say to this, to this man, this handsome man, he'll say, glad tidings from Allah be to you too. Who are you? Your face is one that brings goodness. You know when you see a handsome, good person, you feel at ease. And so you'll say, who are you? And then this handsome person who came to the person in the grave, he'll say, I am your good deeds. I am your good deeds. So a person's good deeds, when he's in his grave, when you're in your grave, your good deeds will come to you in the form of a handsome, beautiful person. And he'll say, I am your good deeds. And he'll say, by Allah, I only knew you quick in obeying Allah and slow in disobeying Him. May Allah reward you with good. And then a door is going to be opened up, a, a window, a portal is going to be opened up and he'll see his place in paradise. So he'll see his home in paradise. He'll see his house. He'll see where he's going to be staying. He'll see where he's going to be living. He'll see it. There'll be like a window opened up for him. And there'll be a window opened up for him of a place in Hellfire. And the two angels, they'll say to him that this is what Allah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected you from. Meaning this place in Hellfire. And they'll say this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised you. You know, this, this, house, this house in paradise. This place in Jannah. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised you. And then when he sees his place in paradise, what do you think he's going to say when he sees everything that's in front of him? He's going to say, Oh Allah, speed up the arrival of the hour. I want the hour to come right now. Hurry up. I want to let the hour come quickly so that I can join, rejoin my family and rejoin my property and you know, go into Jannah and enjoy everything with my family. And so it will be said to him, Calm down and nim nawmat al arus. Sleep the sleep of a newlywed person. Go back to sleep. 
and then the soul will go back to sleep and then within the blinking of an eye he'll be raised up on the day of judgment so all this will happen in a split second it won't happen straight away it won't, it won't take long for it to happen you know it's like for example someone when he goes to sleep you know when you go to sleep and then you wake up in the morning does it feel like you've slept for six seven hours it doesn't does it it feels like you've slept for maybe five seconds five minutes you know maybe one or two minutes you go to sleep and before you know it you've slept for like six hours and you're awake and the same thing when a person dies when a person dies it won't even feel like he's, he's, he's been dead for a hundred years, a thousand years. It'll be like as if he was just asleep for a few minutes. Or he was dead for a few minutes. And then he'll be raised up on the Day of Judgment. And he won't even realize, subhanAllah. So this is what the Prophet ﷺ said with regards to the believer. And then he started to talk about what happens to the disbeliever. To the one who never believed in Allah. The one who wasn't a Muslim. And the scholars say the same thing happens to the, disbelie- to the sinner as well. So if a person is a, a disbeliever, or if he is a sinner, if he was a Muslim, but he was a really bad Muslim, he never obeyed Allah, he never used to pray, never used to fast, never used to be good to his parents, never used to say good things, never used to read the Quran, never used to give in charity, never used to help the elderly, never used to help his family, was really bad to people, was really cruel to animals, you know, that kind of person is, always, is also, this is going to happen to him as well. So the Prophet said that as for the disbelieving slave, two angels will come from the heavens and they'll have clothing from hellfire. And they'll have the smells of hellfire, the stench of hellfire. And then the angel of death will come and he will sit by the head of the soul and he will say, O oh, cursed soul, O oh, malicious soul, leave the soul with the anger and the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then this soul will come out of the body, but it doesn't want to come out of the body. You know, like the soul of the believer will come out like water coming out of a water skin or from a glass. comes out easily. But the soul of the sinner, the soul of the disbeliever won't come out as easily. Why won't it come out as easily? It's going to be attached to the body. The Prophet said that this is going to come out. The soul of the disbeliever is going to come out like a skewer is pulled from wet wool. So if you have a skewer, for example, stuff that you put, you know, uh, things on to cook, it's got spikes on it, and there's wool on this skewer. When you take this skewer, what happens? Does the wool come off completely clean? Huh? No, it doesn't, does it? So you have some wool that stays stuck to the spikes of the skewer. So the Prophet is saying that when the soul is taken away from the disbeliever, it's going to come off the body like a skewer comes off wet wool. Why does it come off so hard? Why does it why doesn't it come off so why doesn't it come off easily like the soul of a slave? Who can tell me? Okay, why does it want to leave the body? Why? Okay, so he knows what's in store for him. Good. And there's another reason as well. Yeah? Excellent. Very good. MashaAllah. Well done. It's attached to this dunya. Because he never used to worship Allah, did he? All he used to do was just have lots of fun, you know, never obey Allah. The only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells it to do. He just used to do loads and loads of sins, you know, following the dunya. You know, the scholars, they say that a person who follows the dunya, he's never, the, dunya is, the dunya is going to run away from it. It's always going to be chasing the dunya. It's never going to catch up to the dunya. It's never going to catch up to this world. And the one who stays away from this world, and he wants to keep away from the world, wants to abstain from the dunya, doesn't want anything to do with the dunya, then the dunya is going to chase that person. The dunya is going to chase that person. And so this soul, because it was so attached to this world, it doesn't want to leave the body now. Because this body that we have is just something that's, that we're going to have in this world. It's not going to be something that we have you know, in our graves. You know, it's just a soul that's going to be held to account. So it's going to be taken out like a skewer is pulled from wet wool. 
And because of this, it will cause the veins and the nerves of the body to burst. This is what the Prophet ﷺ said. And then he said, every angel between the heavens and the earth will curse him. And the gates of the heavens will be shut. You know, like with the believer, the gates of the heavens will be opened up. For the gate, for the disbeliever, the gates of the heavens will be shut. They won't open at all. And the guardians of all the gates will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do you think they'll ask Allah? What do you think they'll ask Allah? For the believer, they asked Allah that this soul would come close to them and would pass by them. With the disbeliever, it'll be the opposite. They'll say, keep this soul away from me. Make sure it doesn't come in my direction. Oh Allah, don't make this soul come anywhere near me. You know, and you'll have the stench of hellfire on you. You'll have a really bad stench. You'll have the, the clothing of, of hellfire on you. You know, imagine you see someone who looks disgusting, smells disgusting. You don't want to go anywhere near him. You know, he walks down the street and everyone just stays away from him. There's like a big gap. No one wants to go anywhere near him. Can you imagine how that person would feel? He'd feel so unwanted. He'd feel like rubbish. Likewise, nobody would want anything to do with this, with this soul that's a disbeliever, that's disbelieving in Allah that was sinning in this world. And then the angels will ascend with it. And as they pass the gatherings of angels, the angels will ask, what is this cursed soul? What is this disgusting soul? And the angels will say, this is so-and-so, son of so-and-so. And instead of using the best names that he was remembered by in this world, in order to add more hu humiliation to this soul, they'll mention the worst names that it was remembered by in this world. So the worst names that it was called by in this world, that's what they, that's what they'll use to, you know, announce who this soul is. They'll say, this is so-and-so, son of so-and-so, and they'll use the worst of names. And then when it reaches the lowest heaven, they'll ask for permission for the gates to be opened. But the gates won't be opened for this, for this soul. Because it was a sinner. It was a disbelieving soul. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تفتح لهم لا تفتح لهم أبواب السماء That for them, for the disbelievers, the gates of heaven won't be open. لا تفتح لهم أبواب السماء ولا يدخلون الجنة And they won't enter into paradise. حتى يلج الجمل في سم الخياط Until a camel enters into the hole of the needle. You know the needle is called a hole where you put the, 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 the thread through? The camel, until the camel goes through the hole of the needle, until then, the disbeliever won't enter into paradise. When will a camel go in through, in, through, through the hole of a needle? Never. Is it possible? It's not possible. So it's not possible for the disbeliever to enter into paradise. Just like it's not possible for a camel to enter into the, the, the hole of a needle because of the sins that it committed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, write his record in Sijin, in the lowest earth. And then he's told, take him back to the earth because I promised them. I promised them that from them I'm going to, from it I'm going to create them. And in it they're going to return. And once again they're going to be raised again from it, from the earth itself. And then it'll go back into the earth. And then when it goes back into the earth, and it's, and it's restored back into its body, two angels will come to him. And it's said that the names of these two angels are Munkar and Nakir. And they'll come and they'll ask three questions. Who is your Lord? What is your religion? And who was this man who was sent to you? And for each question, they won't be able to answer. They'll say, ah, ah, la adri. They'll say, I don't know. They won't be able to answer. They'll be so anxious, they'll be so stressed out. They'll want to answer the questions, but they won't be able to. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't give them that comfort. He won't give them that confidence. He won't make them firm. You know, like with the believer, you said, that Allah will make them firm with strong words, with firm words. For the disbeliever, they won't get this opportunity. They won't be firm in what they say. So, he won't be able to answer these questions. And then a man will come with an ugly face and ugly clothes and a disgusting smell and he'll say I'm here to give you evil tidings that are going to displease you this is the day that you've been promised and then this disbelieving soul will say evil tidings be from Allah to you too who are you? your face is a face that brings about evil it's bad news and then this, this ugly man 
who came to this person in the, in the grave, he'll say, I am your evil deeds. I am your malicious deeds. I am your evil deeds. By Allah, I only knew you slow in obeying Allah and quick in disobeying Him. So whenever you, they would hear what Allah and His Messenger have told them to do, they wouldn't obey Him. Or they would be slow. You know, time for Salah would come and they'll take their time. They wouldn't rush to the Salah. They'll say, it's okay man, I've got plenty of time. Let me just finish this game. Let me just finish this match. I have to finish. I have to finish this level. I've got plenty of time for Salah. And the time for Salah finishes. You know, when the time for Salah finishes, you can't make that time back again. That's it, that time's gone. You know, uh, when it comes to disobeying Allah, the, the sinner is quick in disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he'll see a, a window which will be opened up for him in which he'll be able to see his place in hellfire. He'll see his place in hellfire. And then the heat and the wind from the hellfire will reach him. And his grave will be tightened around him. And his grave will be so constricted, it will be so tight that his ribs will start to break. Because of how tight the grave will become for him. So it will be a source of punishment for him. You know, for the believer, the grave is going to be made nice and white. For the disbeliever, it's going to be really tight. And then, another person will come. A blind, deaf and dumb person. Someone who can't speak, someone who can't see, and someone who can't hear. And he's going to be carrying a sledgehammer. And the Prophet ﷺ said that this sledgehammer, if he was to strike a mountain with this sledgehammer, that mountain will crumble. That's the power that this sledgehammer has. And this power only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he'll come to this man and he'll hit him once with this sledgehammer and this, the, the soul will become dust, it will turn into dust. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will restore this man again. And then he'll be hit again and then this soul will scream. It will make such a loud and you know, bad scream that it will be heard by every single thing in the heavens and the earth except by men and jinn. Except by the men and except by jinn. Everything else will be able to hear that scream that this soul makes. And these are from the punishments of the disbeliever in the soul. This is actually going to happen. This is what the Prophet said. said. You know, these things I'm mentioning is not just a fantasy world. Don't think that it's not going to happen. These things are going to happen. The Prophet said mentioned them. You know, these things are a reality. We're either going to be from the first group of people or we're going to be from the second group of people. And we ask Allah to protect us from this group of people. But this is going to happen. Don't think it's some type of, you know, something that's going to happen, never going to happen to us or it's something far, far away. Because death is going to come to every single one of us. So it's important for us to, you know, think about these things. And then, a door is going to open up, a door is going to be opened up to him from the hellfire. And he's going to be giving, given furnishings from the hellfire. And he's going to be given clothing from the hellfire. And then he's going to say, Oh Allah, don't let the hour come. I don't want the hour to come because it knows what's going to come to him. He knows what's awaiting him. Punishments of the hellfire. You know? And this is what's going to happen to the disbelieving slave. Now I want you to think about, uh, you know, if you're going to school and you're at the, end of your, at the end of your year or you're going to university or you're going to college and you've got an exam to do or you've got a test to do and one day the teacher comes into your class and he says to you, you've got a test coming up, next week you've got your test, end of year test, very important. And I'm going to write all the questions that you're going to have on the test on the board behind me. Here are all the questions. What are you going to do? You're going to think this is excellent, man. I've got all the questions. Brilliant. So you take your exercise book, write down all the questions. And then that day you're going to go home and you're going to find all the answers to those questions. And then when the day of the exam comes, you're chilling. You know all the answers. The teacher gave you all the questions. You know, you've got all the answers right there in front of you. The day of the exam comes, you ace the exam, you get 100 out of 100, sorted. Job done. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger, they've given us the questions that we're going to be asked. 
They've told us the questions we're going to be asked on the Day of Judgment. Now it's up to us to be able to answer those questions. And it's more important than any exam you're going to get in this, in this world. This world itself, your life itself is a test from Allah. And the questions are going to be asked to you in the grave. And you know what these questions are. Who is your Lord? What is your religion? Who is this man that was sent to you? What did you do? What did you do with your knowledge that you had? So all you need to do is learn about Allah. Learn about His Messenger. Learn about you know, your religion. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to do. And inshallah, if a person does this, then you'll be from the first group of people, from the believers. Straight away you'll be able to answer with no doubt in your heart at all. And you'll be able to enter into paradise. The Prophet ﷺ said that the believing slave, when he's in the barzakh, when he's in the grave, after he passes this test, after he answers these questions, his soul will be put into, the, into a bird of paradise. And that bird will be flying in paradise. So that's the reward that a person will get if he answers these questions correctly. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us the opportunity to be able to answer these questions correctly and firmly without any hesitation when we're in our graves. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdik ashadu wa la ilaha illa and astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Zakhna Shaykh for very important reminder regarding what will happen.